Hello everybody! Voltage controlled oscillators are useful circuits uh, that can be used in many applications uh, from music to sensors and there is a very common and very well known circuit, integrator circuit uh, that can be used for this task and uh, it is the 555 it is also well known to be quite a noisy circuit and it can generate uh, a pseudo south of waveform so today we'll go through a much better circuit that generates a true triangular waveform and it will be the starting point for a waveform generator that you can build for your hobby laboratory of electronics and in the next episode we will see how to get a sine wave and a square wave from it so stick with me and let's get started the heart of this circuit uh, that generates this uh, beautiful waveform uh, is, uh, is just a capacitor and uh, a current source, uh, a constant current source. And this is because the voltage across the, the capacitor uh, increases uh, constantly uh, over time following this equation. Now, if we expand the concept a little bit, uh, uh, we add uh, here a current sink and a switch here, uh, so, uh, so that uh, the switch is at first uh, uh, toggled to be connected to the current source, the constant current source, and we see the current will flow in this direction toward the capacity toward the capacitor and uh, charging the capacitor and then the, we took the switch in this way so that uh, the current now will flow from the capacitor through the current sink and uh, the voltage uh, of course uh, will go down with a straight slope uh, the straight slope will rise and then we we'll go down and then toggling the switch uh, up and down continuously we, we generate a, a waveform so how can we translate this into an actual circuit let's see a first approach would be a circuit like this this transistor with this resistor these two diodes and this resistor this block here let me uh, enhance this with a uh, uh, little rectang rectangle here well this block uh, is a current source and if you if you look carefully you will notice that this block here below it's uh, a current source but just specular uh, to this and it is a current source to uh, the negative rail. As long as this transistor is turned off uh, because we have here a negative voltage, uh, a current will flow through this transistor, we charge the capacitor and we in output we, we have a voltage that uh, will rise uh, with a constant uh, straight slope. And uh, then when the voltage reaches a certain point we'll turn on this transistor we we'll give a positive voltage here, the transistor will turn on and the current will start to flow through this transistor and therefore we will have a discharge of the capacitor but you will see now a problem because uh, you will see the, the, the charging phase is twice faster than the discharging phase and this is because we have the same current uh, source and current sink here uh, let's say current sink or current source to, to negative and this is because the currents uh, are the same uh, and uh, when this is uh, and when this the capacitor discharges through this way uh, still we have some current that comes from here and uh, and keep it charged so so to win this current we need to double down the current f that flow through here and this way we can correct this and make the capacitor to discharge using the, at the same time, at the same rate that it charges. Okay, this circuit will work but it requires a high impedance and very low capacitance input amplifier here to pick up the waveform from the capacitor here. 
Hmm, what about an integrator? So this is the idea. We have a positive and negative voltage that are applied simultaneously here. Uh, a, an integrator, a threshold detector and a transistor that cut off the negative voltage. So suppose at the beginning the transistor is closed, uh, so the negative voltage is cut off and through this positive voltage and through this resistor a current will flow charging the capacitor and making the output of the operation amplifier to fall at a constant slope. When the voltage reaches the lower threshold, the threshold detector switches, opening the transistor and allowing the negative voltage. So through this resistor will flow a current and the, a current will be, uh, the amount of current will be double than this because this resistor is half than this. Discharging the capac capacitor and uh, making the output of the operation amplifier to rise at the constant slope uh, until it reaches the higher threshold. At that point the threshold detector switches again, closing the transistor and cutting off the negative voltage and starting the cycle again. So here we go, we have this, um, uh, this is the voltage control input and here we have the control voltage that uh, goes through this uh, resistor that is twice this resistor. And, uh, and here we have uh, an operation on the fire that is used in, to invert the voltage, the input voltage. Now, by adding a resistor, a variable resistor here, like that, oops, like that, we can even adjust the symmetry of the of the output waveform. So this is the threshold detector, and um, and it is actually made with a comparator. These two resistors are used uh, to provide uh, a positive feedback. This works uh, like uh, a Schmidt trigger. We have a transistor here inside here that closes and opens in relation with the, the comparated uh, inputs. And here we have added a diode because the voltage here goes through positive and negative. Swinging between positive and negative is important because this helps the transistor to switch faster. So after a quick test with the breadboard, uh, the circuit board is designed and etched and then the components soldered on the circuit board. And this is the finished circuit, uh, a modification that I will discuss later in the video is already visible. This is the comparator, this is the amplifier, the integrator amplifier, and this is uh, the buffer amplifier and the inverting amplifier. And this is the transistor to switch the charges so to the capacitor. So let's hook up uh, the probe of the oscilloscope and let's see how it works. And here we go, we have the circuit that varies its, uh, its frequency uh, by changing the input voltage, okay. The yellow trace is the input voltage, uh, while the pink trace is the, the frequency, obviously, <laughs> the generated uh, triangular waveform. <coughs> and uh, we can... Uh, Span from the from about uh, whoop, stop it, stop it because the voltage is too low. We can reach the minimum of about uh, 500 hertz, but uh, here the, the waveform is uh, badly deformed, uh, it seems more uh, south of than rather than a triangle. But uh, for from 4.4 kilohertz, the waveform starts to appear in a, a nice triangle. Again, we have a good, uh, whoa, good waveform shape. 300 kilohertz, 
and uh, we are at uh, 538 kilohertz and we are pretty much uh, to the limit 583 83 kilohertz yeah uh, Okay, uh, but at this frequency, as you can see, uh, this the waveform is a little bit deformed here. It is not uh, really striked. Here it's still striked. Here not. It is not. But um, well, okay, we are at the limit of the of the circuit uh, because it was. Uh, Designed to, to go to, to reach the frequency of 500 kilohertz. Okay, 500 kilohertz. Uh, uh, there is a little bit of distortion here, but um, yeah, I think it, it's acceptable. It's acceptable uh, at this frequency. And this is the symmetry. The symmetry even changes a little bit of the, fr the frequency, a little bit, uh, quite a lot. Okay, this must be corrected by tweaking the resistors that, uh, or maybe I have a, a wrong resistor. Now I, the yellow trace is the waveform and uh, I notice that there is a uh, a distortion here let's zoom it a little bit yes you can see, as you can see here there is a distortion in the signal why this happens well i've already found a solution and made the modification but to let you understand uh, i jumped the, the the modification and uh, moved the trace the yellow trace to the output of the comparator to let you see what happens the oscilloscope uh, the pink trace is the signal that comes from the comparator, but if I zoom this a lot, you can see here is the li this little spike. And this is what happens uh, on the collector of the transistor. As you can see, because we have a, a very little voltage here, the spike is very is much more large than at higher frequencies so it, it uh, gives an influence uh, and uh, and stops the discharge of the capacitor no sorry it doesn't stop it accelerates the discharge of the capacitor and in fact as you can see here it changes brutally the uh, the slope. So my idea is this. Here inside the transistor there is a little parasitic capacitance between uh, inside here between the base and the collector of the transistor. This signal goes up, uh, a pulse uh, passed through this capacitance and, this, and it is transferred here making this uh, uh, making this uh, this uh, spike, this distortion. So to correct this, uh, I, I think to, to, to do this, uh, to put a photoresistor here with a diode in parallel, like this. So when the positive uh, signal comes, uh, it is reduced because I uh, added another resistor here and while when the negative uh, signal comes uh, it passed through the, the, the diode so it is at its full intensity uh, to the base of the transistor. You would wonder why to uh, put a resistor in parallel to the diode. Well uh, here we can see the um, waveform with the just with just the diode and without the resistor you can see the the diode suppress the leakage of the charges that uh, would would influence the waveform but uh, also uh, 
um, the charges are not removed uh, uh, fast enough from the, the the junction of the transistor, and uh, and uh, it will it it doesn't turn off uh, quick enough. In fact, this uh, influence the maximum frequency the, the the oscillator is able to reach, and uh, we we stops just at uh, 110 kilohertz instead of 500 kilohertz. So uh, the resistor in parallel uh, lets uh, go, let pass through some charges to the to remove charges quickly from the base uh, from the just junction uh, of the transistor. Uh, and um, but uh, and the diode uh, limits the, the the charges to leak from the base to the collector. The symmetry is not working properly probably it is because there is a wrong resistor okay i have uh, the a wrong resistor here instead of a uh, 18 kilo ohm uh, i have i had um, a 15 kilo ohm and then the, and then i added this um, little uh, potentiometer trimmer to adjust the symmetry and uh, here we are we are at 36 uh, 37 kilohertz and I can reach uh, up to uh, 510 kilohertz uh, and uh, and if I try to go further with the potentiometer with the input uh, as you can see the frequency goes a little bit low because we reach the saturation of the uh, of the output of the operational amplifier. To change the range it is sufficient to attach another capacitor in parallel with the, the original and um, of course this is uh, for testing purpose only uh, because the definitive application will use a commutator to commute between different capacitors. And, and as you can see now the frequency has lowered to 4.7 kilohertz and at maximum we reach uh, 45 kilohertz the voltage is a little bit off if i put an ac you can see it is a little bit shifted and this is the final schematic i've added a uh, buffer amplifier to separate the from the input voltage uh, to the voltage that controls the resistors and uh, added uh, compensation to uh, compensate the gain for symmetry between the lower and higher frequency and then uh, added uh, uh, little capacitance here of, uh, of 100 picofarad to compensate for the higher frequency and give um, better response for higher frequencies and uh, of course uh, the diode and the resistor network uh, to limit the leakage of charges uh, through base uh, collector of the transistor. Next episode uh, we will see how to make the waveform uh, stable in amplitude and how to remove the, the, DC, the DC component uh, from the signal and, um, and then how to shape this uh, this waveform, this triangle waveform, into um, a, a sine waveform, and then into a square wave, a square waveform. So stay tuned for the next uh, episodes. For now, that's all, folks. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.